you know that space is a daunting concept to many. From its sheer size being completely unknown to us, to its near total darkness, to the total alien environment completely unsuitable to humans. Yet, you wouldn't believe how curious humans have been. Ever since we first discovered what it was up there, at least for the most part, and we have sent various probes and other technologies into the void to try and discover exactly what's out there and if we can survive the journey. Lately, it seems that the Voyager 2 is reporting some strange things. So let's look into how Voyager 2 came back online and detect a mysterious movement. History Voyager 2 is a space probe that was launched by NASA on August 20th, 1977 with the express mission of studying other planets and interstellar space. As of today, it still remains the only spacecraft that has actually visited a combination of either of our solar system's gas giants, Jupiter and Saturn, and also both ice giants, Uranus and Neptune. It's been out there operating for over 44 years and has reached a distance of over 129 astronomical units or about 19 billion kilometers from Earth. Fortunately for us, the Voyager 2 is capable of remaining in contact with Earth despite the distance. Can you believe that? It communicates with us using the NASA Deep Space Network, and we are able to keep tabs on it thanks to a DSS-43 communication antenna, which is solely responsible for communications with the probe and which is located around Canberra in Australia. Voyager 2 has sent back some very interesting data to the planet during its time in space, enlightening us on space density as well as other things. In fact, it's only thanks to some incredible luck that we didn't receive this data after decades, perhaps even centuries of waiting. The fact that the Voyager 2 is able to achieve solar escape velocity to be able to leave our solar system is wholly thanks to the fact that in the 70s, a special arrangement of the four giants in our solar system that only happens every 176 years would be able to help the two Voyagers to boost their speed thanks to the gravity being used to help acceleration. Of course, this meant that the Voyager mission absolutely had to launch when it did, with absolutely no room for error. If NASA hadn't been able to get the mission together in time and launch on schedule, we would not have seen pictures of Uranus or Neptune, or the rings that surround Jupiter, or heard any interesting interstellar sounds for another almost century and a half. Design Both of the Voyager spacecraft 1 and 2 are designed with the same specifications. Both craft weigh 1,759 pounds, or 798 kilograms, and both are 8.2 feet, or two and a half meters in length. Both have equipment that are powered by plutonium-238. They both feature an impressive 16 jet engines too, and carry 67 megabytes of data storage. Of course, by today's earthly standards, 67 megabytes is just about a dozen songs on an iPod. But in the 70s, that was an incredible amount of memory. When both launched, both the Voyager craft were on equal footing, but their accomplishments are worlds apart. Pardon the pun. The first craft launched from Cape Canaveral, Florida, was actually Voyager 2, with Voyager 1 being launched 16 days later on September 5, 1977. What they found. Although both of the Voyagers have been successful in their missions, though with very different results, despite launching later, Voyager 1 was the lucky recipient of some favorable gravity, allowing it to be the first to reach Jupiter. Because of this, in 1979, Voyager 1 located and identified two new moons of Jupiter that we knew nothing about previously. It also took pictures of our first look at a volcano on another planet, which was found on the Jovian moon, Io. Four months later, Voyager 2 caught up with Voyager 1 and got some captures of Jupiter's rings, as well as another moon, Adrastia, which actually orbits inside the ring system of the giant planet, which is why it could never be observed from Earth. In 1980, Voyager 1 was able to take the first ever photos of Saturn, and also discovered three new moons which we dubbed Atlas, Prometheus, and Pandora. Following on from this, Voyager 1 altered its course and set off to leave our solar system completely. Nine months after the Voyager 1 exit, Voyager 2 reached Saturn, taking photos of its surface. However, nothing much happened after that for four years. But then, Voyager 2 was able to take some pictures of Uranus, as well as sending some pictures of Jovian moons, Titania and Ariel to scientists back here on Earth. But that wasn't all. Amazingly, it was also able to report the temperature of the planet Jupiter back to us here on Earth. It was because of the efforts of Voyager 2 that our scientists learned that Uranus is the coldest planet in our whole solar system, with a temperature of 59 Kelvin. You want to know what that is to us? Try minus 350 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 214 degrees Celsius. 
It would be another three and a half years before we heard back from Voyager 2 in 1989, as Voyager 2 finally approached Neptune and captured some impressive photos of a major storm happening on its surface. Thus, Voyager 2 completed its circuit of all four giants in our solar system. However, after this, it shut off its cameras and followed suit with Voyager 1, heading for interstellar space as well. There are lots of other things that the Voyagers have sent us, but in 2012, Voyager 1 officially became the furthest human object from the planet Earth, passing through the helisphere and entered into interstellar space. That's right, it took 30 years for it to get out of our solar system. If you think it's moving slowly, then you have to factor in that it travels at a speed of 17 kilometers per second. Voyager 2 would catch up in 2018, also entering interstellar space. And there, it found something fascinating. You've probably heard that space is a vacuum, completely without any form of matter. However, that is not entirely the case because of solar wind particles traveling too. However, in 2019, with over 18 billion kilometers between it and the Sun, Voyager 2 was able to report that the density of matter was increasing. Despite their best efforts, the best minds on our planet here cannot figure out why the particles had increased from 0.002 electrons per cubic centimeter at the edge of our solar system to just 0.12 electrons per cubic centimeter. Of course, we can continue to study thanks to Voyager 2 and learn more and more about the interstellar wind. Let's not forget about Voyager 1 though, also out there in interstellar space reporting back to us. Previously, it sent us a strange sound that was identified as the vibrations of plasma, which is easily the most common substance to be found in space. This is because stars are composed of plasma and the vibrations occur when emissions from a solar body encounter the plasma from interstellar space. It also found a strange signal that lasted from 2017 until 2020. What could that be? Scientists are split on the matter, with some saying the sounds could be related to colossal black holes somewhere in interstellar space. But of course, there are those who would speculate the much more interesting theorem, that perhaps there is life out there in the universe after all. Because doesn't it stand to reason that if our scientists almost 50 years ago could create probes that successfully made it to interstellar space, other scientists from other worlds could do the same. The future. The Voyagers have already done plenty of great work and exceeded all expectations. And as they continue to travel, they will no doubt encounter some of the universe's strangest and most wonderful phenomena. The problem we face is that reportedly, Voyager 1, at least, is beginning to run out of power. And that means its instruments will begin to fail. We have maybe just three or four more years before we stop receiving reports from the machine altogether but certainly they've already blown our minds in amazing ways. If there is life out there trying to reach out and contact us, it seems that it will be a few decades before we are again in the position to find these things out. Perhaps the strange sounds found in interstellar space by the Voyagers are in fact desperate calls out from another species looking to make friends, or they could just be another phenomenon that we haven't encountered yet. Believe it or not, we still have a lot to learn about the workings of the universe.